touch my mind. The old people say he's a mind regulator. Huh? They said that he's a bridge over troubled water. How many know that he'll give you peace right in the midst of the storm? He'll be your buckler and your shield. Woo! The Bible declares he'll be your strong tower and your high tower. I like it because he said he's the very present help in the time of trouble. He's the very present help. <laughs> not just very, not just present, but he's a very present help. That means he's going to show up. Tell somebody you can depend on God. I said you can depend on God. You can depend on him to be everything that you, I feel God. Everything that you need him to be, you can depend on God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about y'all, but when I think about the goodness of all I got to do is just start opening up my mouth and talking about him. Amen. And he comes in the room. I don't care where I'm at. Y'all don't want to hear me. I don't care where I'm at. In my prayer time, it don't take long for God to show up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is faithful to those that are faithful. Y'all better hear me. I said he is faithful to those that are faithful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. You honor the Lord tonight. We want to um, welcome our streaming audience in as we prepare our hearts to receive the offering tonight. I just love the Lord. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Old song we used to sing said, I love the Lord and I won't take it back. He's been so good to me. Said he's been so good to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You can go on and get your hearts ready, your, your, your tithes and your offering ready. Once again, we want to thank God for those who are streaming live with us tonight. You can share with us in our offering. If you have Venmo, you can use Venmo. Our name is Give, G-F-B-M. PayPal on our website, GodFirstBreakthrough.org. Hallelujah. We honor the Lord tonight. And all that is done. Tell somebody, I know God is real. <laughs> He's real in my soul. For he has touched and made me whole. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Let's pray. 
Father, we thank you and praise you tonight for your goodness and mercy. Thank you and praise you tonight, God, for all that you've done. Thank you and praise you, God, for being faithful. Thank you and praise you, God, for meeting all of our needs, for being on time, God, for being the right now, God. God, we just bless you tonight and we honor you. We appreciate you, God, for your goodness. We have tasted and seen your goodness. And we can tell the goodness of the Lord. We have a testimony that you are good. So we honor you tonight and we appreciate you tonight. In Jesus' name, Father, just bless, Lord God, those that gave tonight. Somebody gave out of their need. We thank and praise you, Lord God, that even as we give, you said you would give back to us a good measure. Press down, shaking together, running over. Will you cause me to give me to our bosoms? So God, we thank you for that tonight in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. Come on, say amen again. Can I get somebody to clap your hands for the Lord? Hallelujah. Come on, clap those hands. We bless the Lord. Amen. Go with me to Acts chapter 16. Amen. I hope y'all are still, amen, feasting off of the, the conference from last, last week and on Sunday service, the culmination. God, appreciate God for showing up, for him being on time. And so we're, we're going to stay in the vein, amen, of the new era of he making all things new. Amen. Acts 16, verse 25 to 26. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, and they sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, somebody say suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all of the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. Everyone's bands were loosed. Go with me to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verses 2 through 3. And suddenly, somebody say suddenly. Amen. There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them. I want you to look at somebody. Amen. Just find somebody to look at and say, neighbor. neighbor. Oh, neighbor. neighbor. After the conference, After the conference. comes a hostile takeover. Tell him it's a spiritual invasion. Come on, say it again. After the conference comes a hostile takeover. It's a spiritual invasion. Amen. Are you ready to be taken over? Are you ready for God to invade your life? I'm going to say that again. Are you ready for God to invade your life? So I come to prophesy that the Spirit of God is getting ready to invade your life suddenly like never before, and radical change is going to come to every area of your life. Our theme was he makes all things new. So we're believing God for radical change, radical, you know, for God to, to, to make some things new in our lives. Amen. New in our lives. God is saying that enough is enough. Amen. It's time for him to take over. Time for him to take over. Some of you have been praying and praying. You're believing for change and nothing has happened. Well, I believe that at the end of this conference and all the word that's been preached has been a setup for God making all things new in this new era. Come on, somebody. So this is God's appointed time for a spiritual invasion, for a hostile takeover. Now, it may not be for everybody. It may not be for everybody, but it is for those who are who are tired of your, you know, sick and tired of your life as usual. You know, we don't make changes until we really get tired of something. Amen. You know what I'm saying? When you get tired of your weight, that's when you really get tired of your weight. Amen. Being what it is, then you do something about it. We say that we're tired, but the fact that we ain't done nothing means that we're really not tired yet. And you really don't change. You really don't change uh change things in your life until you are tired. You don't change your attitude until you notice and, and see that you have bad attitudes. You don't change your spiritual life until you, you know, find and, and come to the level, you know what, I need to make some changes. I need to pray more. I need to fast more. I need to come to church more. I need to do some things differently. 
Okay? So I believe that, that God is going to make some all things new in this new era. And so this in spiritual invasion means that he's going to invade your sleep. That means he might wake you up in the middle of the night. He's going to invade your television time, maybe meaning he's going to interrupt it. I'm going to invade your playtime or whatever that is. I'm going to invade your fleshly time. I'm going to invade your relationships, invade your finances. That means he's going to stir some things up in your finances and make them better. I'm going to invade your relationship with me. How many know when God does that? That means he's going to inquire more of you more of you. He says, I'm invading your mindsets. Come on. Invading your mindsets. Meaning he's going to cause you to start working on your thinking. Cause you to start working on your thinking. See, your mindset is not going to change until you start make, until you do something with your mindset. The Bible tells us how to think. But just because the Bible tells us how to think don't mean that we're going to think that way until we start thinking that way. Am I right, somebody? All right, so um, he says that I'm going to invite, invade your health. Amen. That means you're going to see some changes for the better in your health. Come on, time for him to get rid of all this sickness and disease. He's going to invade our lives, invade our lives. And so the reason why there needs to be a spiritual invasion, a hostile takeover in your life, is because we've got to get to where God wants us to be in this new era. I don't believe that 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 God gave Pastor Jermaine the theme, you know, uh, telling us it's going to be a new era for no reason. Amen. For no reason. And then we turned around and talked about, amen, he's making all things new. So that means there's got to be something that's getting ready to happen. And then he started talking about revival. I was listening to um, a couple of preachers on TV, I think it was, and they were, t no, I was reading in the magazine, and they were talking about revival. This is Franklin Graham. Franklin Graham has been going around from, from state to state to state having revival, having revival. He's, he's gotten, getting thousands of people coming out. People want to be revived. People know that something is happening in the earth realm. People know that Jesus is soon to come back. And people know that there needs to be some changes. So, so people are starting to flock toward the anointing. They're going to flock toward the anointing. All right? So God has got to get us to where he wants us to be in this new era. So he's saying there will be a spiritual invasion, a hostile takeover, and there will be a move of God in your life personally. I'm not talking about just in the church, but I'm talking about in your life individually. If you want it, God's going to give it to you. But you're going to have to want it, and you're going to have to tell God, I want this, and you're going to have to spend some time seeking him and, and asking him for it. The Bible says we have not because we ask not. So you're going to have to ask for it. And I believe this is going to happen suddenly. We're not going to know what's going to hit you, but all of a sudden you're going to know that you've been invaded by the Spirit of the Lord. Now, I know that in my own prayer life. I know that in my own prayer life. I, I know when shifts happen. Because I can, I can sense the, I can sense um, a greater presence of the Lord when I'm praying. Come on, somebody! I ain't gotta pray 15, 20 minutes before He show up, huh? Because I believe I do my thing. I do praise and then I do worship. Come on, somebody! I praise Him first. The Bible says, "Enter into His gates with thanksgiving, into His courts with praise." So I go and I start praising God. Anytime you start praising God, come on, somebody! He gonna, He gonna show up. Then I go into a worship. I, I tell him how good he is and how much I need him. And when you start doing that, you're going to begin to feel the presence of the Lord. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, so uh, you know, um, most of the times we're going to talk about the word invade. It's used in a military sense, meaning to enter into forcefully as an enemy, as to conquer and to take possession how many know when it's like to take possession of what God says is yours, okay? But, but this time it's not about you taking possession, but, be, but it's about you being overtaken by the Spirit of the Lord. Overtaken by the Spirit of the Lord. I believe God will do that if you want that to happen. You're going to have to have a desire, okay? Um, invade also means to enter and spread throughout something completely. Enter and spread throughout something completely. Y'all know we need God to spread throughout us completely and completely. 
okay? Other words for invade would, would mean to attack, to occupy, to conquer, to overrun, to penetrate, and of course to take possession. And when it's used in a medical sense, other words invade would be um, a plague, an infect, infest, colonize, parasitize. Tell somebody God's gonna colonize, overrun, occupy, and penetrate your life like never before. Tell some, you ought to tell, come on, come on, God, just come on now, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Come on, God, now, come on, come on. I need you to show up and show out. If you live in your house by yourself, that means you are in a prime place for God to really, because see, you ain't got to deal with nobody else. Ain't nobody spirits there but yours. Come on, somebody. So you ain't got to wrestle with nothing. You ain't got to deal. You ain't got to, you know, tell somebody, would you please turn that up? You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, 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 of course, it's good when you got somebody that's in the house and y'all on one mind and one accord. Then both of you do it. But if you by yourself, honey, you need to, it ought to be you and Jesus. <laughs> ought to be you and Jesus. Go back with me to Acts chapter six, 16. I'm going to try not to be too long tonight. Acts 16, verse 16. And it came to pass, as we, Paul and Silas, went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. All right, they, went, they, were, they were in prayer, and they were met by a damsel possessed with the spirit, in other words, with the, with the devil. All right. Now, now just think about it now, because anytime you start doing the work of the Lord, you're gonna get the devil's attention. Okay. I mean, you're gonna get the devil's attention. All right. You minding your own business. You going to church. You singing on the choir. You're a church intercessor, usher, greeter, minister, elder, pastor. Maybe just somebody who cleans the church. But it's gonna get the devil's attention because you are doing the work of the Lord. You are doing something for God, okay? Verse 17, the same followed Paul and, and, and us and cried. These men are servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. She did many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that same hour. That same hour. So, listen, don't be dismayed just because when you command a spirit to come out or when you lay hands on sick, you know, on somebody that's sick and the demon don't come out right then or they don't get hit here right then, it said that it came out of her in the same hour. So that means it might take a minute for something to happen. So don't give up on God just because you just cause somebody ain't got delivered or just because you ain't got healed just yet. God, God, come on. He is doing it. He is doing it. All right? He, he is doing it. So you got to understand that whatever it is that you're doing, you are building and you're making an impact in the kingdom of God. And anytime you make an impact in the kingdom of God, that means that you're tearing down the devil's kingdom. Huh? Don't need to be but one kingdom. And that's the kingdom of God. But we know that the devil is out there. He has prince and power over the airways. All right? So the more we do for God, the more we declare the word of God, the more, amen, the devil's kingdom is coming down. And the more you're going to be attacked. Oh, Y'all didn't like that. Come on. The more you're going to be attacked. It's just the bottom line. He don't like you. He don't like you. He don't like you. He don't like you praying. He don't like you doing anything that pertains to God, especially when you got an anointing that's on your life. He don't like you, and he'll try anything he, he can to discourage you, all right, to discourage you. And so, uh, uh, like I said, it angers the enemy, and, and that makes you become a part of his hit list, all right? He, he's going to target you. Verse 19. And when her master saw that the hope of their gains were gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them into the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. Yeah, we're troubling. I want you to know, amen, that we are stirring up something. We are st that's why each one of you got all hell that's been cut loose on you because we're stirring up something up in here. 
I wish I had a real church. I said, we are stirring up for something. The word is being preached under the anointing. The power of God is being released. Come on. And so, so what he does, he, he attacks us individually. He attacks us individually so that the whole can't do nothing. But tell somebody the devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. Tell somebody we are coming up and we are coming out. We're already victorious. Woo. All right. We're already victorious. Okay. And they teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being moments. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates went off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And so, like I said, there's a great attack against you. But doesn't the Bible say, I tell you what, I tell you what now, as for me personally, amen, after last week and on Sunday, amen, the attack was on on Monday. The attack was on on Monday. But I thank God, amen, that, that you know, we fall down, but we get back up. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm saying? We, you, you know what I'm saying? We might get a little vexed in the press, but I got always have a comeback in my spirit. I'm always going to come back. I'm always going to get back. I'm going to come to my senses. I wish I'd come on, somebody. All right? So there's always going to be a great attack against us, but the Bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers from them all. Now, I didn't say when he's going to deliver you, but sometimes he delivers you in the midst of affliction. Not necessarily from the affliction, but he might deliver you from something else while you're being afflicted. I know plenty of times I've been praying for one specific area and God turned around and did something else and something else I wasn't even praying about. Or either he spoke to me about something. I, wasn't, I said, God, I wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't praying about that, but he spoke to me about something else anyhow. All right? Now, even Paul said in 2 Corinthians, he said, um, I, I am more in labors and abundance, stripes above measures. In other words, he's talking about how he had to go through hell. He says, three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. He said, I suffered shipwreck. Night and day I've been in the deep. All right, so he goes on, talks about the pain that he went through and all the, the how he had to fast and he went on no fast. Okay, he was fasting, he was hungry, but he wasn't on no fast, okay? So don't even think that we're going to be tearing down the devil's kingdom and he not attack us. Jesus said that in the world you're going to have tribulations. But then he said, be of good cheer. He said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have over." So he let us know, amen, that, yes, yeah, stuff is going to come. But he's already overcome, so that means that we've already overcome because we belong to him. He says, be of good cheer, for we are, he have already overcome the world. So like I said, we're going we gonna to go through stuff. You might, get a, you might get knocked down. You might have a slight setback for a comeback. But the Bible tells us blessed when these things happen to you. Blessed when they happen to you. Verse 23. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into the prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. How many stripes have been laid upon you for the gospel's sake? Now, listen to what I'm talking about. How many beatings have you taken since you've been saved? In other words, how many lies have been told on you? How many times you've been betrayed? How many times your family and friends turned their backs on you? How many times did you have to keep your mouth closed and not defend yourself? How many times you have to love your enemies anyhow? How many times did you have to bless them that cursed you and pray for them that despitefully use you? How many times did you have to, did you ever have to feed your enemy? Hmm? Huh? Did you have to give them something to drink or clothe them? How many times did you have to give a loan, you know, you loan money and loan money and they never paid it back? Tell your neighbor, show me your stripes. Show me where you've been beaten. See, we're not being beat physically like that. But it's the things that I just said. That's the beats that we're, that we're getting right now. Verse 24. Who having received such a charge, thrust them into inner prison. The dungeon, the maximum security cell. Now, so not only were they beat down, but now they're in the dungeon. They in maximum security because they didn't want them to get out. They didn't want them to get out. Anybody knows what it's like to be in a spiritual dungeon, in maximum security in your mind. Have you ever had your mind shut down? 
Okay, I mean, you felt like that you were just going to lose it. I know y'all probably ain't, you, you ain't been saved long enough, but there might be a time that I've, I said, God, okay, I need you to help my mind right about now. Mm, help my mind. You know you're in a dungeon. It's dark, no lights, musty and wet, rats and roaches. Come on, saints. You've been in a basement that wasn't finished, and it wasn't a place that you wanted to live there. All right? And so this is the real reason why the attack has come for the enemy to put you in bondage in the captivity in your mind. Because if he gets you in your mind, that's what he wants. All he wants is your mind. If he gets your mind, you, the rest of it going to come up. He just wants your mind. He just wants your mind. He just wants your mind. Because that's where things happen at in your mind. It's in your mind because the Bible says it is with the mind that we serve the Lord. So your mind has got to be right in order for you to serve God right. You got to have a, a mind to serve him. Are y'all hearing me? Okay. So the devil wants to silence you. He wants to be sure you can't get out so he keeps you to yourself. That's why some folk, when they get down and out and bound and stuff, they, the devil don't want you to talk to nobody. Y'all ever notice that? Hmm? They want to they wanna keep you in seclusion. Don't go to church. You don't need to go to church. Stay at home. Ain't nothing going to happen no way. Just don't, don't, even, don't even go to church. Ain't no, you know, God don't love you. Don't nobody care. You know, God wouldn't let all this, all this stuff happen to you if, you, if, if he really loved you. And he'll make you feel like that, that ain't nobody else going through what you're going through. Isn't it amazing how we always think like we the worst ones? Ain't nobody, ain't nobody going, and don't nobody go through what I go through. Ain't no, don't nobody be feeling this bad. I mean, he will make you feel real bad about your life. Has, has any man ever told you God don't love you? Don't nobody at church love you? Why you going to church anyhow? It ain't working. It ain't working. You might as well stay at home. Come on, somebody. Hmm? All right. So it's in the dungeon of your mind that you hear all kind of spirits and voices talk to you in the midnight hour. Like I said, don't go, don't go to church. You're not coming out of that financial mess. They're going to repo your car, take your house back. Why are you serving the Lord anyway? Your children never be saved. You're going to die. You know, why are you going to church? They don't even know you exist. What's the use? I'm going to need y'all to get your minds now. Snatch your mind back. Snatch your mind back. Because if you let them keep it too long, even me with laying hands on you ain't going to be able to snatch you out of it. Y'all better get your minds. Come on, tell somebody, get your minds now. Get your mind. Get your mind. Get your mind. Get your mind. He, he makes you feel dis, you, um, all, all, all depressed and distressed. You feel cast down. Come on. You bound up in the spirit. You can't hear God. You don't feel nothing. And that's a bad place to be. And if you stay too long, he holds you in captivity. You don't want to get to the point of no return. Hmm? I know you saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. You know the word and God using you. You sing on the praise team. You're a church intercessor. You got all of that. Come on. But the devil, you can't allow your mind to get taken over like that. You cannot. Call somebody. Hey, I'm going through some warfare in my mind. Would you pray for me? I'm hearing voices right now. Would you pray for me? Y'all better stop having pride. Amen. Don't want nobody to pray. You pray. I'm going to ask for some prayer. Now, I'm going to need some backup every once in a while. You know, for the most part, you know, I, you know what I'm saying? But when stuff get really, really hard, okay, I need to get some backup. All right? So you got to don't allow your mind to get to the point where you feel like that you just ain't going to make it back. So... That brings me to the point, amen, are you ready for a spiritual invasion? Are you, I didn't get no, I, said, I asked the question. Okay, are you ready for a hostile takeover by the spirit of the Lord? Because if you are, when you leave here, you go home to, God, I'm ready. I need you to come up in my house and I need you to do something. I need you to do something for me. I need you to do something for me. Because some of you are at a midnight hour in your dilemma. Midnight is when you feel like it can't get no worse. You know, midnight is when, when a baby's fever gets worse. You know, when a midnight, when the cold gets worse and you can't go to sleep because you're coughing. 
huh? But midnight also represents a time when God shows up and he shows out. Huh? Midnight, the time when you leave the PM hours and you cross over into the AM hours. Tell somebody, I'm getting ready to cross over. I'm getting ready to cross over. Huh? Yes, the song says, late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. He's going to work in your favor. He's going to work in your favor. Put on your spiritual watch. Your spiritual watch and see what it is that's God doing. Allow God to open up your spiritual eyes where you can begin to see by the spirit. Not just seeing stuff in the flesh, but seeing what's really going on. Seeing what's really going on. See, we look at too much stuff by the flesh, by, by your natural. You got to ask God, God, open up this center eye right here. Open up my spiritual eye so that I can really see what it is that's going on. Y'all better talk to me. Y'all better hear me. All right. So the Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. And they sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard him. So at midnight, that's a lot of times when you get a revelation. Okay, I can do better than this. I can do better than this. Yeah, you're in the dungeon. But for a true child of God, there's something about a midnight when we come to our senses. Now, when stuff get really bad for me, I get crazy. I get radical. I get up here and I preach, I preach like a fool. When I'm really going through some hard stuff, I get real, real radical then. I wish I had some more folk. Y'all, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Huh? Seriously. Seriously. Because I know I got to fight my way out of it. I've got to fight my way out of it. Because sometimes I can't depend upon people. Some, there's some things you just, some, some things I just can't tell nobody what it is that I'm going through. And I need to be able to fight my way out of it myself. S seriously. Because sometimes you tell some people certain things, they look like for real. For real, that's what you're going through. That's what you're thinking. So I just learned, you know what, I just keep it to myself. And I just, I just come out of it all by myself. Come on. Hmm? Like, like I said, so a true child of God gets crazy when all hell breaks loose. You get radical when the devil is trying to keep you in bondage. Somebody tell your neighbor, if you see the devil, tell him I changed my mind. <laughs> yeah, I changed my mind. I, I changed my mind. I changed my mind. Yeah, I was jacked up for a moment. I was depressed just for a moment. I was vexed just for a moment. I was frustrated just for a moment. But tell the devil, I changed my mind. Tell him I got my right mind back. I came back to my Holy Ghost mind. And I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to do, come on, to do war. God ain't brought me this far to leave me now. I ain't getting ready to sit down now. I ain't getting ready to shut up. Y'all might as well just hold. Y'all might as well just hold on. I might got a little age on me. Come on, but I ain't going nowhere. Not yet. Come on, somebody. Woo. So, for the prodigal son, his midnight was when he discovered all his money was gone. He had lost all his friends, and now he was eating what the pigs eat. And at midnight, the word of God said he came to his senses. And he said, hold up, I can do better than this. He said, I'm going home to my daddy. I'm going back home. I wish there was some folk out there would just tell them, I'm going back home. I'm, come on, somebody. I'm going home, huh? You got you to you, you understand that. Job said, God is my maker who gives us, us songs in the night. You better learn how to praise God when the devil is attacking your mind. You got to learn how to open up your mouth and do like Paul said and say, I will bless the Lord when at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth. The Bible says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord because for he is good. His mercy endures forever and his truth endures for all generations. You got a lot to praise God for. A lot to praise God for. Psalm 63 and 6 says, When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. You got to start thinking on the goodness of the Lord. Thinking on, think about how good God has been. I, I mean, yeah, we all done, you know, got craziness going on, but God been good in the midst of it. God has been good in the midst of it. I can't, Lord have mercy. 
I mean, you know, when you, when you realize how God been good to you, you can't complain. You just need to shut up. I can't complain. I told somebody last night, honey, I can't complain. I just can't complain. I can't complain. God's been too good. God's been too good. Verse 26, I'm almost done. And suddenly, somebody say suddenly. There was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors of the prison were opened and everyone's bands were loose. Everyone's bands were loose. I'm going to go back to Acts 2, verse 2, and it says suddenly. Somebody say suddenly. There came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house, and there appeared unto them clothes and tongues like a fire, and they were all filled up with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak with other tongues. Somebody say, suddenly. A Holy Ghost invasion. Come on. A Holy Ghost hostile takeover. A suddenly moment. You need a suddenly moment in your home. You need a suddenly moment in your mind. You need a suddenly moment wherever you are. Suddenly you, you need God to show up. You need to God to do what he do. Now, the reason why it was suddenly, because when God invades your life, he takes you like a storm. You don't know it coming. You don't know it coming. Come on, you don't know that he's coming. He, it's like a tidal wave. It's a tsunami. It overcomes, it overtakes you, it occupies you. But all of a sudden, he's there on the scene and he's doing his thing. He's moving, he's changing things around. Anybody got a change yet? Amen. Come on, since last week, have you got a change? Hmm? The, the earthquake that happened in the, in the dungeon with, with Paul and Silas, that was a spiritual invasion. That was God coming in on the scene. That was a hostile takeover. When God invades, attacks, possess, penetrates, occupies, colonizes, take over your life, he shakes up st some stuff. He shakes you up. See, he just ain't coming for one thing. He coming for everything. He coming for all of you. He's coming from all of you. He just don't want you here. He wants you whole. He wants all of you whole. Come on, somebody. Huh? He wants, he wants to colonize you, to spread throughout your entire being, your spirit, your body, your soul. This hostile takeover means that real change is going to come to every area of your life. Help me, Jesus. Some of y'all been in the dungeon of your mind long enough, and tonight, tonight, somebody say tonight. Somebody say tonight. In the new era. Come on, in the new era, God is making all things new for me tonight. Tonight, I'm going to have a spiritual invasion. Tonight, I'm going to have a hostile takeover. God, I need you to take over my mind. I need you to take over my body. I need you to take over my home. God, I need you to do some things in me. God, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. God, I'm sick and tired of seeing all these demons. I'm sick and tired of fighting all these spirits. I need I need you to move God and I need a suddenly woo, some of all shot hallelujah hallelujah and a good way to get God to come up in your place is that you need to go into a praise honey you need to go into I will bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth oh magnify the Lord with me somebody let us exalt his name together for the Lord is great and greatly to be praised praise him under my Hoshia. praise him you need to open up your mouth and shout hallelujah God says I'm going to invade your sleep. I'm going to invade your television time. I'm going to invade your mind. I'm going to invade your body. I'm going to invade your children. He come out she and take it in the bush. I'm going to invade your spouse. I'm going to invade your family. The folk who don't lie on you. The folk who don't talk about you. God says a spiritual hunter by Hoshia is coming over. Woo! Shebosheya. This ain't just for you, but it's for your family because you done pray for them over and over and over and over and over and seem like ain't nothing done yet. Well, because it wasn't the appointed time, but tell somebody this is the time. This is the hour. This is the night for God to show up here on the motion and show out. Woo. Hallelujah. Open up your mouths and praise him. Hallelujah. 
you need to praise him for his goodness and his mighty acts toward the children of men how many know if it had not been for the Lord that was on your side where would you be do I have any grateful people in the house tonight tell somebody I'm grateful I'm grateful I'm grateful that God ain't through with me yet I'm grateful that God ain't throw me away I'm grateful that I'm still here I'm grateful that God is a God of a second chance of a third chance and a fourth chance tell somebody I'm grateful I'm grateful oh give thanks unto the Lord for he is good he is good he is good praise him praise him let all the people praise him praise him in the sanctuary praise him in your home praise him in your car under the Moshiach let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord I said let everything if you breathing you ought to be praising him I said if you breathing hallelujah hallelujah God I bless your name tonight God I'm gonna praise you in advance I'm gonna praise you in advance I'm gonna praise you in advance for the money coming in I'm gonna praise you in advance for the bodies being healed I'm gonna praise you in advance for our minds being regulated I'm gonna praise you in advance for filling the church up oh God God we're gonna praise you right now we're gonna praise you in advance hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who crowneth thy life with good things. Bundle of Oshire. Woo! Somebody say, Yes, Lord. Come on, say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes to the spiritual invasion. Yes to the hostile takeover. So somebody say, God, make me over. God, make me over. God, make me over. Take my mind over. Take my life over. Take every hand of a hush. Thank you, Jesus. Tell somebody, I feel Jesus. Tell somebody, the Holy Ghost done come in the room. The Holy Ghost done showed up. He come out, she had taken it up time. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Lift up your hands and give the Lord a Shabbat. Give a come on, my mama, my mama, Shabbat him. There you go. Praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you. Make the devil out of a liar. Tell the devil you the bald faced liar. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When I look back over my life and I see where the Lord has brought me from, all I can do is say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo, shamo shandaria. Hallelujah. Woo, shit, take it up, Osa. Thank you, Jesus. There's residue that's left over from Sunday. I said there's a residue that's left over from Sunday. In the level shea. He call y'all a level hook under the ashia. Rebbe, you should take care of the I learn how to tap. I learn how to tap in the Holy Ghost. I know when he show up. And I learn how to. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, God honor your prayers. God said, I'm going to honor your prayers. God says, I'm going to honor your prayers. Hearing that in about Shire, what you prayed in secret, Deacon Willie, God says, I'm honoring your prayers. God says, I'm going to give your mama visitation. You call your little boy Hoshia. I'm going to give her a dream. I'm going to shake her soul in a dream, says the Lord. He can't have a shiny The Bible says the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You're a righteous man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And your prayers have taken flight. Hallelujah. See, some, see, you got to understand, our prayers can go where we can't. Sometimes we can't go there in person. But say, oh God, I send the prayer. I send the blood, God. I send the blood. 
the blood of Jesus in the name of Shia. You got to send the blood. God, we bless your name tonight, Jesus. Come on, clap those hands for the Lord. Come on, he's a wonderful God. He's a wonderful God. He's a wonderful God. Joy, I hear the Lord saying, fear not, stand up, sweetheart. I hear the Lord saying, fear not. He says, for I am with you to keep you, to hold you up. Baby, you need to understand something, that your life belongs to the Lord. You are the firstborn of your parents. Huh? The first seed, the firstborn seed. And that means, amen, that you got a special anointing on your life. I don't care what the devil might try to, to put on you or my, what the devil might try to make you do. You belong to God. You hear what I'm saying? You belong to God, baby girl. And you're going to serve God. You're going to serve God. The anointing that's on your mama and the anointing that's on your daddy, Hanaba Hoshaya, is going to rest upon you. Come here. And we're going to go. The same glory, the same glory. When you go to school, hallelujah, God says you ain't got to feel nothing. He said, because I got some angels that's going to watch over you and protect you and keep you. God says, I'm going to pick out the people for you to deal with. Everybody ain't going to be able to be your friend because God's hand is upon you. And let me tell you something. The devil know when somebody is handpicked by God. He knows it. But you know what? God is not going to let you be deceived. God says, I'm opening up your spiritual eyes and I'm giving you a discernment. You're going to know who's right and you're going to know when somebody ain't right for you. And when you feel that, when you feel that, when you feel that, you take, ha, she a tubo shot. In the little boat, she did the see her. He called In the mighty name of Jesus, God. Under the Boshaya, plead the blood. He called my shut the cat of Boshaya. Out of thy belly, out of thy belly shall flow rivers of living water. He called my shut the cat of Boshaya. Out of thy belly shall flow rivers of living water. Baby, you gonna speak in tongues? You gonna prophesy? Yes, yes, yes. A, a spiritual invasion. A hostile takeover. He called my Baby, yes, God says, my hand is upon your life. And the devil cannot have you. He cannot have you. Because your life is in his hands. Somebody bless the Lord for us. Come on. Somebody bless the Lord for her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell somebody it's already done. It's already done. It's already done. It's already. See, I'm a living witness. I'm a living witness that when you grow with them up in the things of God, they won't depart. Look at mine. Look at mine, honey. Look at mine. Mine was in church two, three, four times a week. Come on. I put the fear of God on them. They lied. I told them, you're going to hell. I asked them, do you want to go to hell? Come on, somebody. See, I was crazy. I was real radical crazy back then in them days. Real crazy. Amen. Real crazy. Real radical crazy. But how many know you need that? You need that when you got kids. Especially, come on somebody, because they're your lineage. And so you got to decree and declare some things over them. And not let the devil come in and you got to stop what the devil tries. Even before he attempts anything, you got to stop it. You got to stop it. You got to stop it. And so the devil gets real mad. He gets real angry. I know the devil don't like me. Y'all ain't going to talk. I know the devil won't mock me because I got my, my children. Come on, somebody. My grandchildren, y'all ain't going to talk to me. Not getting ready to have a grand. Oh, come on up in here. Huh? And the hand of the Lord, the anointing of God, it flows from generation to generation to generation. Hallelujah. So we bless the name of the Lord tonight. 
thank God for God moving on us individually for doing and as he moves on us individually then we, when we come back in the church and everybody's anointing get on one mind on one accord that's how God gonna move and we're gonna see revival like Pastor Jermaine has been preaching for so allow God to do what he needs to do in you individually allow God to, to shake you up honey go home and seek him seek him like get in your prayer closet get your face on the floor and tell God how much you need him Tell God, you know what, I, I want you to come in and take me over. I want you to make me over. I want you to do, make my mind over to do some new things in my life. Amen. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Come on, bless the Lord. We want to invite those streaming artists to come out and pay us a visit. Amen. We're at 115 Old Kanye's Road in Stockbridge, Georgia. God is moving. God is moving. The word of God is being preached. Hallelujah. With much revelation and knowledge and power under the anointing. So we bless God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just honor you tonight. We appreciate you, God. We're so grateful that we're in the land of the living. We're so grateful of your goodness and your mercy. We appreciate you tonight, God. Let this word get rooted within our hearts and our minds that we that we will allow you to do what you need to do in us give us a, a, a spiritual invasion in our homes a house to take over as we leave from this place God I plead the blood of Jesus over each individual car I pray for traveling mercies that we return home God safe and sound in Jesus name until we meet again in Jesus name amen God bless you all good night